Well, thank you all for being here. I know it's a long day, long week. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming to Haskins Honors. At the beginning of this season, the Haskins Foundation asked me to be a brand ambassador for the Haskins Award presented by Stiefel. It has been a fantastic year for me personally and professionally. Uh, the back of the range is growing exponentially more than I could have imagined. So before we get started, thank you to Brian Stubbs. He's the executive director of the Haskins Foundation and their board of directors. I truly am humbled and honored to be here. Uh, we are at Ami La Costa for the national championship. After three years at Greyhawk, we're trying something a little different this year. This evening, the Haskins Foundation and the College World Golf Championships Foundation were honoring your achievements as all we're honoring your achievements as the 10 Haskins Award finalists. Inevitably, only one will be named the winner later this week, but collectively, what you've done is truly remarkable. 16 wins in this front row, 42 top tens, a scoring average just a fraction over 68 strokes per round. Your families, your coaches, and everyone in attendance wholeheartedly supports college golf. They are here to honor you this evening and to see you carry the legacy of being named as a Haskins Award finalist. Guys, there's over 2,000 golfers in Division I. You're the 10 best. I might, absolutely. I very well may have the best job in college golf. All I get to do is travel around the country, go to the best tournaments, watch the greatest players. No matter where I'm at though, I do get this one question and it's where are you staying this week? Uh, before any rumors get started, I just wanna get out in front of this one. I'm not staying here. Our host this evening has generously provided us with an incredible venue. At this time, I'd like to ask John Fields, president of the College World Golf Championships Foundation, to come on stage for some brief remarks. Okay. Okay. Brief? Brief. Okay. Well, I'm delighted to be here this evening. Um, I'm thrilled, actually, to be here because this is kind of a dream for us. Omni La Costa has made this possible. The Grand Blanc, which is this magnificent house, uh, has also made it possible. It's not particularly easy with NCAA rules to be able to kind of navigate through their marketing issues. And yet here we are, and because we are a cart path away from Omni La Costa. But I am delighted to be here. I'm, uh, before I get started, I want to thank Pearl, my beautiful wife. Um, she's the coach's coach, and uh, she's helped us through 27 years at Texas, 10 years at New Mexico as a coach, and I'm, I'm so happy to be here. Um, I want to recognize just a few individuals, Coach Mike Holder and Robbie Holder, who are here uh, in support of these efforts. Uh, College World Golf Championships Foundation going forward is meant to underwrite the cost of the national championship going forward in perpetuity. We're hoping that this is going to be a neutral site and that it will be the permanent site of college golf. We'll see. Hopefully uh, cooler heads will prevail and we'll be able to do that. And I hope you guys are challenged this week. This is a great golf course. I want to thank all the coaches that are here, um, our dignitaries this evening, Mark and Cynthia Brooks, uh, Brent Buckman, who was on our 1970, Mark and Cynthia Brooks, Mark winning seven PGA Tour events, playing in 803 PGA Tour events, a record, um, and then winning at Valhalla, which just concluded this last week, several years ago. Um, also want to thank Brent Buckman for being here. Brent was on our 1972 national championship team and was a, was a uh, member of uh, our team and uh, was teammates with Ben Crenshaw. Uh, to have Ben here and Julie here this evening, very meaningful to Pearl and I, very meaningful to College Golf, very meaningful to our effort going forward to make this a very, very special event for you guys, the guys that have played magnificent golf this year. Couldn't be happier for you guys being here. I want to thank all the coaches that made it happen for you all to be here this evening. I want to thank Brian Stubbs, the, the board of directors of the um, Fred Haskins Award, and Stiefel, my goodness. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that somehow 
uh, we can repay Stiefel for doing all the things that they've done for the Fred Haskins Award. And uh, in my best voice, I want to thank Ben Aldberg, the back of the range. Thank you. Of course. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. Appreciate it. Oh, we almost had it, April. We almost had it. We were this close. I do want to recognize April Workman, who is yes. the executive director of our College World Golf Championships Foundation. Um, she's worked tirelessly. Coach Hepler, we haven't raised enough money yet to pay her, but she's worked nine months. And uh, God willing, some people will get as excited about what we're doing and, and help us do this in perpetuity. Craig Martin. Unbelievable what you have done for us. And uh, is Michelle Zwyrick here? I think I saw her earlier. Um, Josh, thank you for being here. Uh, Omni La Costa, the Rollings, my goodness, what they've done for us. $30 million uh, into the golf course. Here we go. Sorry. Five and a half million dollars into the know if I can facility. Um, this is one heck of a venue. Uh, is David Small, where's David Smallwood? Right there. David is our superintendent. Um, he's got a little ulcer right here with my face on it. I've been here 15 times, and um, he's done a remarkable job. This, this golf course is really only 10, 10 months old. And really, to be honest with you, it's three weeks old because that's when we've kind of opened it. So you guys are going to be the recipients of that. He did a magnificent job. Again, congratulations to all of you. Only one can win but we're thrilled that all of you are here. That's very good. No, no. no. <laughs> That's better than I thought that was going to go. I thought it was going to go. That's okay. You good, good job, Coach. Um, as Coach alluded to, there are just so many people and companies that have a love for college golf. There, as Coach Field said, there's no greater partner than Stiefel Financial. The eyes of golf have turned to Omni La Costa this week. For those that uh, can't be here, uh, they get to watch the national championship live in primetime on Golf Channel. Uh, I'd like to invite the Senior Vice President of Stiefel Financial and also Vice Chair of the Haskins Foundation, Mr. John Schenkel. It's the first option, I made it up the steps. You did, you did great. You did yeah, great. I know it didn't fall. Uh, well, I wear two hats, and uh, we are. Uh, I, my, I'm gonna put on my Stiefel hat first, and I must tell you the commitment of Stiefel and and College Golf uh, is about 12 years old. We're about uh, 12 million dollars into our commitment to College Golf. Uh, putting you guys on the air is not cheap, but we think it's worth every penny that we pay. Uh, to have the national championship aired. And on a venue like this, Coach, it can't get any better. It uh, just can't. So we're, we're hoping you all have a, a wonderful tournament. Um, Stiefel loves college golf. We love ladies' and men's college golf. Uh, we started the Haskins Award 54 years ago. And, Mr. Crenshaw, if I may tell a quick story on you, you may or may not know, uh, the, the, the award started in, at Callaway Gardens in, in uh, near Columbus, Georgia, where we used to host, um, we can't call it this anymore, but we used to call it the Dixie. And uh, it was now changed to the Southern Intercollegiate Golf Tournament. And there was one golfer at the time that just dominated college golf back then, and it was Lanny Watkins. <laughs> And so uh, the group of a group of men, along with our a longtime teaching pro Fred Haskins, uh, got together to say, you know, there needs to be an award for the best player in college golf, and it doesn't need to be chosen by a four-man committee or a, or an eight-person committee. It needs to be chosen by you guys who play with each other all year long. You know who the best golfer is this year. You also, uh, and we also ask the coaches who are supporting you, the same question is to who do you think is the best college player for the year? That's who our votes come from. And we're setting records every year with, uh, with the number of votes. Uh, I hate to tell you, 
uh, Ben, but the first year we probably only had 40 votes. You know, now we're now we're approaching a number that I'm not allowed to You're say. You're not allowed to say that I number. Promise, uh, yeah, I promise you, I promise you, it's six figures. It's, uh, there are 2,000 golfers, and half of you guys are voting, and we won't we won't be happy until everybody votes for this award. So anyway, back to that quick story that I'm not telling that I want to tell. Uh, Lanny Watkins, he dominated college golf. So this group of men said, you know, we need a we need a, a collegiate award. And so we put together this award and the Haskins Award and uh, Lanny had one more year of college and Lanny thought for sure that he was going to be the winner of the first Haskins Award. Wrong. <laughs> Mr. Crenshaw was the first winner of the Haskins Award and he won it two more years after that. Never to be forgotten, Ben, I'm telling you, never, never to be. We could not have an inaugural winner better than you. You're the best name for college golf. You're a great name for professional golf, but you're also a great name for college golf, and we appreciate you. Um, so uh, I, I can hear Ben saying, John, you've had enough. Uh, I do want to put on my Haskins hat briefly and my Stiefel hat. I'm glad to tell you, is Andrea here? Andrea, you were here. I can't see you. There you are. Uh, Golf Channel and Stiefel have agreed to a three-year extension of sponsoring NCAA golf. So we will continue to sponsor sponsor college golf on TV in prime time. If it's here, it'll be in prime time. So we're real excited about that. I can't. I have to also mention we love the Haskins. We love the Onica Award as well, and we're ten years into the Onica Award for the best female golf. Stiefel and the Haskins Foundation love college golf, and we wish you the very best this week. Thanks. Well done. Thank you. Well done. So, as um, Mr. Schinkel said, you know. Uh, the, the Haskins Trophy has traveled all over the country. Um, players, coaches, fans of college golf, they they always kind of take a look at the trophy, see the names on it. And as uh, Mr. Shingle said, there's one that clearly stands out. Uh, in 71, it's, he was the first name on that trophy, and there was not another one on it until 1974. Now, we're going to discuss a lot about Mr. Crenshaw's collegiate career this evening, but I selfishly wanted to take an opportunity to sharing a stat about his amateur career that I don't think you guys are aware of. Now, some of you are going to turn pro in this summer, and some will play in a handful of amateur tournaments, uh, the Santa Hannah, uh, the Northeast, and the Southern, and the Western. I'm mentioning this because our special guest this evening won all four of those championships, and he did it in the same summer, 1973. He is a three-time NCAA Division I National Champion, three-time winner of the Fred Haskins Award. He is our honored guest this evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ben Crenshaw. When I look at you guys, it brings back so many memories of playing this great game that we all love. Uh, La Costa, Julie and I, my wife, is Julie, is here. We, uh, Our youngest daughter is getting married in September. We've got three girls. We had an early date here at La Costa. And, uh, but I, you know, playing th this tournament, but playing in California, but I, I, I look at you guys and you guys are the best. You guys are the best. And it's, it's something, competition, uh, in any form, I, I can certainly, Brent Buckman and I, Brent Buckman was my roommate in school and teammate. Uh, we knew what we had to do, which was tall orders, because there were some great, great players that we played against. Uh, I know this, that you guys are so talented now, it takes a special, special effort to extend your playing. Uh, it's difficult now because there's a lot more of you. 
uh, there was there was some 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 players that we knew we had to beat, which was really a tall order. And I thought it was when I first started traveling as a, as an amateur and then came into college, we would all hear stories about somebody from around the country who could really play, and you always wanted to see that person. You wanted to see what what they did, what their talents were like. You mar- I marveled at them. There's still, to me, there was a guy named Eddie Pierce, who I still think was was one of the best players I've ever seen. Uh, and I, when I was 16, I went to Boston, uh, and I watched him hit a long iron. It was like Sam Snead hitting a two and three iron, and you know many of you don't have a two iron in your bag these days. But I tell you what, this was unbelievable to watch. So you asked yourself, "Well, how am I? How, what am I going to do to to beat that? I got to. We got to mix it up." Uh, we had, I, obviously I had Tom Kite. Tom Kite and I grew up in the same town, Austin. I had an immediate competition with him, which was he was so great for we were great for both of us. Uh, naturally, we uh, we searched ourselves trying to trying to get better. And the more you play, the more places that you play, I thought was I think to travel and to apply your game to where you're going is a lot of it and it's difficult a lot of times you don't like certain playing conditions you don't some conditions that you favor uh and it's all in a in a in a in a vein of learning the game you guys are learning fast because you guys are good i watch you you know julie and i we go to the masters every year and we watch some of you come in uh, I'm amazed at your talent. Uh, it's a com- it's a different game that I see in my mind's eye when I watch you. It's such a long game now. Uh, that is a great part of it, no doubt. Distance is a great part of the game. But you know as good as I do that on and around the greens is where it happens. Uh Jackie Burke is one of, one of my dearest friends of the 1956 Masters champion who passed away. He was almost 101. But he always had a saying. He was one of the best putters I ever saw. He got out on the green. He said, this is where they give out the trophies. On the, and it was so true. That there's nothing that gives you more confidence than holding a putt when you have to for par or for birdie or for eagle. It's funny how that works. In an era of some of you guys can carry the ball 340 yards, which is unfathomable to me. Uh, and, I, you know, we just keep stretching out the golf courses to match you. But still, those delicate strokes are, are where things change. I think you all know that. And the more you play, uh, uh I can't say enough about you coaches. You guys watch and and educate and and make these guys understand what they're doing, playing together in the heat of competition. You do it so well. You've got so many people from around the country who can really play this game. It's great to see, but I can't thank you all enough for your dedication as a guider and a learner. Uh, but uh, I, I wanted to thank certainly Coach Fields. Uh, he's had a lot of great players and, and good teams. And uh, I'll tell you what, there's obviously there's nothing like winning. I, 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 our, we won three NCAAs when I was at Texas. Uh, almost, almost won uh, another one. Uh, but that your memories will last you a lifetime, and I, I just see it, it, it. Every one of you guys, you got teammates you can depend on. Uh, there's nothing, nothing like it. Some of my best times that I've spent in life w- was playing for my team and playing against Wake Forest, University of Houston, USC, you, you name it. It makes you a better 
competitor. That's well said. Well said. Well, I, I know you spent some time with these finalists uh, here at the house, but I'd like to bring each one up to sit and talk to you a little bit. Our first finalist is a uh, sophomore from Florida State. Had a uh, fantastic spring, picking up three wins in a row. Uh, the Seminole Intercollegiate, his home tournament, Valspar Collegiate down at the Floridian. And um, what was the third one, Luke? Which one did you win? Lewis Chingua. Lewis That's the uh, University of Virginia's tournament. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Luke Clanton from Florida State. You know, you stay there. Yeah, you're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Thanks going, Luke. How you doing? <laughs> Valspar. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so Luke, I mentioned three consecutive wins. Obviously, uh, to get something like that done, you have to ride a pretty hot putter for a pretty long stretch of uh, weeks in a really busy spring tournament. You're sitting next to possibly one of the best putters of all time. Uh, I'm curious with both of you, just for Luke, what was it like for those three weeks when it just kind of seemed like, I guess it seemed like you couldn't miss, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, for a good three weeks in a row, I just – was putting pretty well, hitting the driver pretty well. But, I mean, like you said before, I think around the greens and putting is one of the biggest uh, things in golf. And, you know, when you kind of get hot with the putter, it's pretty good. <laughs> you know, you don't you don't miss much, so it's pretty nice. It's fun, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, this is, sounds weird. Yeah, the best putting that I do, I don't think about anything. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. You just see it. You see it. You just see you see the ball crawl, and you see it. You see it go at a certain pace. Yeah, no, no doubt. And that's all. You don't think about your stroke. You don't think about it's. It's. That's when it gets. When it's really simple, it gets really good. Yeah, you know it's going to go in. That's yeah. the best part. There, there was a video. I'm just. It's completely jogged my memory by you saying this. Fred Meyer challenge. <laughs> I have, it's on video. You, you're on the putting green with like two or three other putters or two or the other guys, and you're hitting putts to no hole. And you're saying, you're like, oh, this is great. I can't miss. Well, there's no hole there. And you're just like, saying, this is so easy. And yeah, wasn't right. it? Your stroke just smooths right out. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Um, well, Luke, congratulations on a great year. Um, you and the Seminoles, good luck this week at Imola La Costa. And yeah, enjoy your time here in California. Thank you so much. You got it. Nice to meet you. Good luck. Keep playing well. Turn this way. Perfect. <laughs> Our next finalist is uh, from East Tennessee State University. Um, yeah, just really incredible. Uh, you know, wins at the Southern Conference. These are some of the conference uh, champion wins at the Bank of Tennessee Intercollegiate, uh, wins at Wake Forest, and a really great story of, of college golf. Someone coming from Norway and coming and playing collegiate golf in the United States. So, uh, ETSU, Matsegi. East Tennessee State. Yes, sir. One of my dear friends, Bobby Watkins, Lanny's brother, went to East Tennessee State. Nice, yeah. nice. Actually went there one time. We played a little uh, get-together there. It was fun for his coach and good cool. playing. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mats, can you talk about just your college experience? Again, coming from Norway, I know you're at Cal State Northridge for your first part of your career. Round after COVID, transferred to East Tennessee State, and you know, have a great week here. And you're kind of, you know, setting your sail on a, on a professional career shortly thereafter. Can you just talk about your college experience just here in the United States? Yeah, well, my college college experience been very different from where I was to where I am. I guess I started off at probably rather bad D1 school and kind of. <laughs> They're not here right now, are they? No, absolutely You're fine. not. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it's been night and day. Just, yeah, being able to, like, coach took me in, and, I mean, it's completely different. It's, like, I guess, a golf school. That's, yeah, that's it. With Victor Hoblin. Yeah. That's Julie's favorite. <laughs> Julie loves Victor Hoblin. <laughs> <laughs> He's not here either, so. Um, <laughs> That's yeah. Yeah. He's pretty good. He's yeah, really good. He, he's doing pretty all right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ben, Beautiful. what was your college experience like? How did Texas shape the rest of your professional career and kind of just the, the format of, like you said, teammates and playing a great competition? What did that do kind of to get you started? Uh, well, University of Texas had some very fine teams before 
when Brent and I and Tom Kite got there, we had a wonderful uh, coach and then Coach George Hannon. Uh, and there was two guys on previous teams, a guy named Chip Stewart and a guy named Rick Massengale, whom I caddied for. I caddied for Rick Massengale. He went on to play on the tour, but he used to pay me off in gloves, his old gloves. That's <laughs> That was my payment. But, no, uh, it had a legacy. Yeah. It, it had a legacy, the Longhorns. Uh, you know, one, I think it, it's college life. And we happened to be winning national championship football, yeah. which which was, you know, God, we thought, wow, this is pretty good. And we, th we took a page out of them. God, if they can win the national championship, why can't we? It helped us tremendously. Y'all come from great schools and they excel in all sports, but there's something about that. You, your name and your reputation and what you do, uh, which really helped. Yeah. Well, Mott's a uh, great season. I know it's uh, going to be an exciting week for you here in California, so all the best to you and your team. Thank you. You got it. Play well. Play well. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks. Our next finalist is a, a senior from the University of North Florida. I had to write this down. He owns uh, – he's literally rewritten the record book at the University of North Florida. He owns the record – program history record – 18-hole score, 54-hole score, nine individual wins, top fives, top tens, top 25s, rounds under par, and rounds in the 60s. <laughs> so the only thing is left is this week at the National Championship to get the best 72-hole score record, Nick Abrelsic from the University of North Florida. All right, Nick. Good to see Congrats, you. Nick. Thank yes. you. North Florida, yeah. Yep. You, uh, you're one school in Jacksonville, but yeah, no, but um, you know, where you where you're from has a lot to do with it, too. Well, you good weather conditions in Florida, you know, warm weather, uh, but you know, you learn, you learn is where you're from, you get com you get comfortable from where you're from, and then but what you can take your game on the road to other places, you got to make it work, <laughs> which is a trick, so you have to learn that way, yeah. I mean. UNF has shaped me to be the person I am and golfer I am tremendously. Like, I don't know, obviously, if I went somewhere else, I don't know if I would be the same golfer where I would be in my life right now without being at UNF. Oh, that's great. Nick is one of two uh, Freshman of the Year Award winners that are here tonight. Um, both of you played professional tournaments as amateurs. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, Nick, what are your experience playing a professional event as an amateur and what have you kind of taken away from that that you're going to kind of store away for uh, the upcoming yeah, professional I, life? I mean, my first professional event, I played Valspar. I'm from Tampa, so it's like yeah. my home event that I grew up watching. It's, it's a heck of a course. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's definitely the most nervous I've ever been. I mean, a bunch of family, friends. Unfortunately, my teammates couldn't come out that year, but people from high school I haven't seen in three or four years, and then they just appeared and... <laughs> The first tee shot, everyone went nuts, and I was just like, "Okay, this is this this isn't college anymore. This is actually people watching." So, that was that was an experience, and I'm glad I did it for in a week or two here when there's actually spectators out there. I can say, "Well, I've already been in this situation, so I can I know what it's like." So that's kind of what I've taken away mostly from professional golf. Well, it's meaningful to play uh, as an amateur with the pros. It's it's got to play in Colonial in Houston. I got to actually play in uh, Ben Hogan's last tournament in, uh, at Champions in Houston, uh, which is unbelievable. It's a long time ago. <laughs> well, Nick, uh, have a great week. Fantastic career at UNF. Like I said, rewriting the uh, record book there is uh, quite impressive. So enjoy your week and uh, kick off the rest of your college career in a Thank strong you. way. Congrats. Thanks for yeah. coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Our uh, next finalist is a senior at the University of North Carolina who, I guess, ended his uh, his last shot in competition on his home golf course was a birdie putt to win his regional, which uh, that's a pretty sweet way to go out on your home golf course. Uh, how long was the putt, Austin? 
Okay, it's a 15-foot putt, just at, uh, so just <laughs> straight up the hill, no break whatsoever. Uh, our next finalist, Austin Greaser from the University of North Carolina. <laughs> this putt gets longer and longer, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah I think so. <laughs> next week it'll be 45 feet. <laughs> <laughs> Austin, you came back for a fifth year, and I'm guessing you're looking back on that decision uh, pretty f favorably, considering all the things you've gotten to do, uh, Walker Cup and coming back for with the Tar Heels. What is uh, what has that fifth year meant to you? Yeah, gosh, I'm I'm so glad I made uh, the decision that I made to come back. Um, it's been a lot. I mean, I think the Walker Cup was a big reason, um, and that sure didn't didn't disappoint, especially at St Andrews. That was such a special week, and to be able to represent your country, especially um, kind of on their home soil at their home base and to, to come back and win the way we did was phenomenal. And then just this year with the team, um, we've had a really, we have a really good group of guys um, and it's been really special to be around them. And I feel like I've, I've matured a lot. So it's a great decision to come back. You're, you won your very final college event. It was the 73 uh, National Championship. Austin's trying to do the same thing. A lot of these guys, this is going to be their final collegiate event. How did you I go did into so that? I did well in my studies. They asked me not to come back. <laughs> but no, no, you know, and there was nothing like an experience at St. Andrews. I mean, and for y'all, that yeah, was a great comeback. And uh, it's uh, you get to play these places that you see, but when you go – with your one wonderful group and then to do it it's it, it's so meaningful all the experience that you can gain gain but uh you've accomplished a lot austin and uh, congrats for that yeah you thank bet. you appreciate it have a great week enjoy appreciate yourself you. well. right, gonna miss you, you. yeah well. bye. miss you <laughs> play well <laughs> got it come this way our uh, next finalist is a freshman from Auburn, um, seven top threes, uh, two wins, and he's the reigning SEC champion. Uh, I just I, I can't imagine anyone's uh, more happy for him than perhaps his coach who's sitting right behind him, Coach Kleinert. So our next finalist is Jackson Coyvin from Auburn. War Eagle. War Eagle. <laughs> Damn I love it. He's, see, he's adapting, <laughs> not just hooking horns. He's got a war eagle. I told him I had Alabama blood in me. My dad's from Andalusia, Alabama, yep. so not far from Auburn. <laughs> I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bama and Auburn, they, they don't get yes. along. But, but that's okay. <laughs> Uh, Jackson, you've had a great freshman year, and you know a lot of freshmen coming into college. It's it's a little bit hard to make that transition from junior golf to to college golf. I know it's probably a lot of things that played a part in you doing so well this year. But uh, can you point to maybe one that's helped you with your freshman campaign? Um, probably just maturing a little bit. I uh, I think the the jump from junior golf to college golf is definitely big, but. Seeing a lot of these guys that are sitting in this front row, how they play the game, I think it's helped me uh, take that jump. Now, Mr. Crenshaw, you you won this uh, tournament, the NCAA, as a freshman. I mean, did you feel out over your skis at all that year, or like what was it like as a freshman? Freshman can do it too. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, it's funny. I, I look back and my uh, freshman, sophomore, junior, it's some of the best golf I ever played. Uh, crazy i had such confidence and uh i was just playing but that was fun having to meet other people from different parts of the country and playing tournaments it was fun but uh well, you uh, you've Thanks had a great into place. Yeah, it's it just but and also you're you know Jackson's trying to do exactly what you did. He's trying to lead his program to his first national championship, just like you did for Texas in '71. So can be done. It can be yes, done. Yes, can. <laughs> Jackson Coyman, congrats, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. A senior from Georgia Tech who's had uh, well, I guess a whirlwind twelve months to be fair. Um, Low am yeah. uh, at the Open Championship, reigning amateur champion that he won at Hillside, and uh, yeah, took some time away from his studies to play in the Masters this year. So, uh, Mr. Christo Lamprecht from Georgia Tech. Christo, how's it going, sir? Special man, Thank Christo. You, sir, sir. Great seeing you at Augusta 
always, Christo. You played such great golf, and you have a you have a different vantage point. Than <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> what? I didn't do that. It was it, it, it. which is something I've never experienced. <laughs> But no, no, it's uh, you, definitely something different. I've, I've watched you. You've got such a beautiful, sm smooth swing. And uh, I remember playing with George Archer. George Archer was six foot six. He always told me about the trouble he had playing with golf clubs. He always had to, you know, had to get his clubs fitted. He was an exception. Nice man. But how's the air up there? <laughs> um, and La Costa is pretty nice, but in Georgia is pretty humid up there. Yeah. <laughs> Ben, Ben, what was your first memory of the amateur dinner? I know Christo got to enjoy that this year. What was your first memory? The amateur dinner actually is older than the champions dinner. Mm, you know, it was Charlie Yates, who Charlie Yates was a great friend of Bobby Jones. They grew up you know, together in Atlanta, and uh, Charlie Yates was a great player, an amateur golfer himself. They won the thirty-eight Walker Cup, I think, at St. Andrews. Uh, Charlie was great, good storyteller, uh, but it just seemed natural that he would host the dinner. But only had two of them. But God, it was fun, <laughs> just fun. Yeah, I mean, I could I could agree with that. Uh, I was probably one of the best uh, dinner nights of my life, um, sitting around past master champions and past amateur champions and U.S. amateur champions and a lot of the members too. So uh, it truly was a once in a lifetime experience, and uh, that whole that whole week kind of just makes me hungry to get back there. So hopefully, hopefully, I do so soon. How do you find balance with everything else going on with with your amateur schedule, playing the Masters, all the obligations of, of your time and also still find focus to have a great season with uh, Georgia Tech. You won Olympia Fields in the fall, Ben Hogan. So you've had a fantastic college career. Yeah, I mean, I'm trust, tr tr still trying to figure out how to find that balance. But I think um, I think that's been, I guess, my best learning curve. Um, and I think that's what pro-life is all about. Those guys have a lot of time. They give away off the golf course to sponsors and et cetera, et cetera. So I think for me uh, personally, it's been a great learning curve this last 12 months and preparing me for hopefully a, a good, uh, I guess, professional career after this. So um, it's been a great time. I'm trying to figure it out as we go step by step. But uh, I've really been enjoying it, obviously. Awesome. Well, have a great week here. Close out your career strong and enjoy the national championship. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you sir, thank you for being here. Appreciate thank you. It. Thank you, sir. Thanks for thank you very much. Appreciate it, man. Matthew Riedel is a senior at Vanderbilt. He's actually, uh, Mr. Crenshaw, he's uh, he's the lone Texan in the group of finalists this year. Um, super consistent, seven top tens, uh, leading uh, the Commodores to uh, 17 wins. So, uh, Mr. Riedel, come up and join us, please. Vanderbilt, man, there's a lot of smart people at Vanderbilt. I'm really, I'm really <laughs> glad you brought that up. Under, he, he was, he was his valedictorian, and he was a valedictorian in high school. Well, undergrad, yeah, I, hey man, I, I got, I'm bringing my A game tonight, man. Um, under, undergrad in economics, master's degree in marketing. Correct. Oh, wow, God, <laughs> and and oh, that's that's pretty, really impressive. That's that's pretty good. What are you gonna miss the most about college? Just the camaraderie, kind of day in, day out, dinners, practice with the guys. We have a lot of guys on our team who take things not super seriously. So William, my roommate, keeps things fun, keeps things loose. So that'll definitely be missed day in, day out. I'm growing a mustache. Yeah, I'm right glad now. you I'm, see that's <laughs> putting that out there. <laughs> I, I I did a deep dive on pictures of you, Mr. Crenshaw. I couldn't find one of those. Is there one that exists somewhere? Oh sure. It's there's one that exists. <laughs> <laughs> Left me hanging. Oh. <laughs> um, that's a tough man. He's done everything. That's a what? That's what a well-rounded educational experience. There it is. And and playing the way you do. That's impressive. Thank you. You both know a lot about learning the game in Texas. What's something that maybe some of these finalists that didn't grow up playing the game in Texas, like what advantage maybe do you have in adverse conditions? How did it shape your game? At least in Houston, a lot of wind, especially in the spring. Um, so I feel like that kind of gets you to flight your ball pretty good. Um, irons, whatever that is, just being able to control shots. I think that's a pretty big importance. And also just kind of learning to read lies and kind of, I know a lot of people struggle on Bermuda greens. So 
that was definitely an advantage growing up on that. How about That's you? That's exactly right. Wind, turf conditions, different parts of times of the year. You had to try to make the ball behave somehow. It's all part of it, but I think when you have conditions that are less than perfect, you learn. So I think that's it. Well, fantastic career at Vanderbilt. Um, go enjoy the rest of this week and the rest of your career, and, uh, yeah, go chase down that national championship. Thank you. Thank you. I took it easy on me so bad. Another player from Vanderbilt that is on the uh, that's a Haskins finalist is Gordon Sargent. He's a junior at Vanderbilt, um, winning the Mason Rudolph his home tournament in uh, back-to-back years. I think that's the only time that's been done in program history. And um, I think as soon as a couple other guys in the front row turn pro, you'll regain your number one uh, world amateur status as soon as they uh, venture off to the pro career. Uh, Mr. Gordon Sargent from Vanderbilt. Gordon. Look at that hair. Got him. Yeah. <laughs> now, not, I know there are pictures. There are definitely pictures of you with that hair. I know that. <laughs> I played a lot of golf with Mason Rudolph. Really? Yeah. I know, I know his son, Griff. Yeah. And they were so nice to me when I got out on tour. I mean, some of these, you never forget those things. Uh, but Mason was such a nice man. That's Gordon, you made an announcement recently that you'd be returning for your senior year. Uh, I think everyone in the world of amateur golf and college golf was thrilled to hear that, maybe with the exception of, you know, Coivin and Valdez and the rest of the SEC. But other than that, I think everyone's really, really in, in favor of that. Um, is this just a case of a kid that just don't, doesn't want to get a job, or is there other reasons behind this? Um, well, I'm still perfecting my mustache game, so I need yes. to do that. It was uh, there two days ago, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yes. Um, but no, I think just like we've mentioned, kind of colleges, you're going to make the best memories of your life. So just kind of having another year of that, um, playing college golf, you know, I have a great group of guys with us. Not only as your team, but just kind of people you're competing against is awesome. Um, obviously, our coach is here. He's been great. Um, and just kind of seeing how much you can, how better you can get the golf, but also the kind of the, the whole life aspect and maturing as a person, kind of like Greaser mentioned. Uh, Mr. Crenshaw, you made your first, you made a cut in the first seven Masters appearances. So I think two as a low end, like a T19, T24, something like that. But yeah. you made the cut in seven consecutive years. Gordon played the Masters a couple of years ago. How did you kind of add your, I guess, your knowledge base, so to speak, with uh, with learning that golf course that maybe uh, oh, Gordon, was... Gordon can take that with him and these other guys as well? So much to learn. It was the most different course that I'd ever seen. Uh, and so undulating and you, the greens were fascinating and take you a lifetime to learn some of those greens um but i enjoyed it and it was just spacious and i felt like you know you could really take a swing at it uh, but but on and around the greens there that was the story and uh, but as i said it takes a lifetime to learn a lot of the breaks in the greens and uh uh I, he relied on your caddy. I had a guy, a guy named Luke, in my first couple of years, and uh, Luke was fantastic. He uh, he was very non-technical, and we'd get up over a shot, and I'd say, I'd say, "What do you like, Luke?" And uh, and and I'd I'd say, "I think I'm gonna hit a five iron." And he said, "I think it's a four. I said, I think it's a five. He said, well, go on. <laughs> <laughs> he was just, you know, like, yeah, we learned the course like that. He was fantastic. But then I, later I had a guy named Carl Jackson who meant my whole life at Augusta. Everything I've ever accomplished at Augusta, I owe to that guy, Carl Jackson. He knew that golf course like the back of his hand. He, he caddied in the tournament when he was 14 years old. And uh, I grew up there, but I could tell that he knew, and I was learning with him, and I relied on him. I, a lot of what I did over there is due to Carl Jackson. Gordon, have a great week. Congrats, and good luck with Vanderbilt. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Our next finalist is a senior from Stanford, Michael Thor Bjornsson, who uh, came back from an injury, had a little bit of a short season, but uh, played tremendously, won the Cabo Collegiate, won the Premier Fields in, uh, in college golf. 
Michael Thorbjornsson from Stanford. Michael. How's it going? All the smart people at Stanford, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure some of my teammates yeah. would say I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as I mentioned, my, oh yeah, I'm just, as, uh, as I mentioned, came back from injury, uh, back injury, ankle injury. I was there at the Western when that was, I guess, right before you shut it down. How can you explain coming back to form so quickly and being so successful, um, this season? God, uh, it was really tough. Um, those four months that I took off, I was in a back brace and a boot and in crutches, um, for, for the majority of those four months, uh, it was really tough watching my teammates go compete um, without me, uh, especially my senior year. But um, I mean, I've had so much support from my friends, my teammates, family, coach, uh, Leo. Um, I've been working with UGP um, starting in January, and I've been able to be healthy enough to first off walk okay, and then. Um, Play some tournaments as well. God, that's fabulous. That's I, fabulous. I, I tried to find, I think everyone can un, kind of understand, I've been trying to find correlations between the finalists and Mr. Crenshaw, and I'm doing my research, and I'm trying to determine if, if you had any sort of an injury that you had to battle back from. And the only thing I could find is the 1986 PGA Championship, <laughs> and I've already gotten permission that you can share this story, so the floor is yours, sir. <laughs> We played uh, at uh, at Inverness in Toledo, and uh, I was playing okay. You know, the 18th hole always bothered me. It was a short par four, but tough green. And I, I finally hit a decent shot. I think it was about my th was third round. Decent shot up on the green, and I I flipped the club, and it went end over end, and it hit me right on top of the head, <laughs> and right on the crown, and I was bleeding and I went up to the green I bled all over the green and everybody looking at me in horror I, and then so the next day Dave Marr was one of my great friends in telecast and he saw me the next day and he had a construction helmet on <laughs> and said you better test yourself but I yeah I've done all kinds of but I, I still have an injury that I I three putted the uh 16th green at Colonial in contention, uh, and I was so mad, I, I walked through the gallery over to 17. There was this giant oil drum full of trash, and I just kicked it. I kicked it and made full contact with it, hobbled over, and, and later I had surgery. I had surgery on my big toe. and I, So I've had a lot of temper tantrums over the years <laughs> got me in trouble but i really applaud you coming back i don't know what i'd do if you, if you had a bad back my god that's it's unbelievable kudos to you i appreciate it thank you awesome michael have a great week here at uh, national championship nice thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our, our last finalist is a junior from auburn um, funny story, Brendan Valdez is the first player I saw this season. It was at the Atlanta Hartsfield Airport. I was coming back from the Walker Cup, and Auburn, I think, was going to Maui Gym, if I think that's correct. And um, preseason watch list came out. He was really excited, and he's like, I got to find a way to stay on that list the rest of the year. And, and here he is, Brendan Valdez from Auburn. Come on up. Brendan, another Auburn man, Auburn man. Yes. War Eagle. War Eagle. War Eagle. I love this. Equal opportunity, <laughs> college chance. This is great. <laughs> um, nine team wins. You're the reigning SEC champions. Um, awesome. Really spectacular awesome. season for Auburn. Can you just maybe share some remarks about just the strength of this team and, and what it's meant for you this season with these guys? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we've had a, a tremendous year. I mean, it helps when we get two freshmen incoming that already start, and there's one right here that just won the Hogan Award, so it makes it a little easier there. Um, <laughs> but our team, I feel like we have the we have a pretty good mentality. We're going to go out and try and win every week, and 
it's really good when you have a group of guys backing you like that. So this is actually not the first time that you have met Mr. Crenshaw, thanks to uh, some some good research. Actually, you're the one that told me this, so you get all the credit. So a lot of these guys are meeting Mr. Crenshaw for the first time. Uh, Brendan, when did you meet Mr. Crenshaw for the first time? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I was prompted. This is unbelievable. <laughs> um, so it was maybe 2018. I, I won the drive, chip, and putt <laughs> national championship. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, and as I received my award, he is the person who handed it to me. <laughs> that was a pretty cool, pretty cool thing the being master. able to see him <laughs> at the match. Is this the first player that you've kind of met after the? I think it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I know you're. You have such a great appreciation of, of history, whether it's you know champions dinners or even Haskins and like. Such a love of history. That must be a perfect fit for you to go oh, to the drive trip. Somebody was talking about the same thing. Who was it? Somebody won a tournament, and he was he. he Akshay was, Batia was. I think, yeah, Akshay Batia just won a PJ yes, tournament. He's the first one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So about that. Well, kind of ages you too. <laughs> Yeah, tell me about it, really. Uh, well, Brendan, congrats. Glad you're here uh, as a finalist. I know it's been a long year, but uh, congrats on all your success. And uh, good luck with you and Auburn this week. Thank you very much. Play well, you guys. There you go. We're out of finalists. That's it. How do you want to end this? Uh, I, I just... I'm happy to meet happy to meet such a handsome group and you guys you guys are you guys are wonderful but I do look at you and think about when I was your age and playing golf and loving it and uh you know you have aspirations each one of you know how well the other guy can play you know if you get the breaks you'll you'll be there uh, but enjoy the, the week and the competition. But I'm proud of all of you. you who wouldn't be? Who wouldn't be? You're, you're great uh, examples for our game. I think there's something to be learned from golf every day. Uh, I think it turns you into a solid citizen, helps you in other uh, ways of life. And uh, I think it's always good. It was like my old teacher, Harvey Penick. He, he always wanted to get people into the game. He said, because it's a good game for you. And you learn. Well, can't, can't thank you enough for being here. This was uh, spectacular. My honor. It's been yeah. fun. It's been, uh, thank you to everyone that was involved in putting this thing on the Haskins Foundation, Stevel Financial, Coach Fields, your great foundation. Players, coaches, I know you got a big day tomorrow to get ready, so feel free to hang around, take off, whatever you need to do. Everyone else, feel free to hang around. Um, I think the security deposit is taken care of at this house, for so we're we're in good shape. But thank you all for being here, and uh, we'll see you next year. Good luck this week at the National Championship.